Hey, what's up, everybody? Come on in. Find a seat. Welcome to Tuesday Night Worship. <laughs> Guys, this is our last time together this semester doing this. I know it's sad, but it also, it's also fun. This is going to be a fun night. It's going to be a really cool night uh, to be together and, and to worship together one last time. In just a moment, um, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and take out your phone and check in. We're also going to pass a couple of our tablets so you can do that as well. On the check-in form, I want you to notice there is a section that says summer address, right? Pay attention. You want, you want to know this, right? There's a section that says summer address on there. We want to send you mail. Yeah. Yeah. Who likes getting mail? Yeah. You should be excited about getting mail. If you don't know what mail is, it's this form of communication where people write something, maybe, maybe type something if we're technologically advanced. We put it in an envelope. We seal that envelope, put a stamp on it, which costs increasingly more every single year. And we put that envelope in a mailbox, and it ends up at your house in your mailbox. But in order for that to happen, we need to know where you live. Okay, so if you'd like to receive some mail from us, we want to keep you updated on things over the summer, keep you in the loop on events that are happening, share some life together. So please give us your summer address so we can send you some mail and keep you in the loop on things as well. Um, just wanted to share a little bit tonight. We're going to be honoring our seniors a little bit later. And so our seniors from the worship team are going to be up front tonight. And all the songs that we worship together with tonight are picked out by them. And I think that's really, really cool. So songs that have been important to them or meaningful to them over the last few years. And I think that's really, really cool for us to worship together with those things. So, all right. Because I know it's, it's going to be a big one. Go ahead and check out the announcements video. You're going to get more than you bargained for tonight. With some bloopers, some highlights. Here we go. All right, dude, seriously, like, dude, get Gerald back in his cave. Look at that. Dude, that's impressive. Dude, you can, like, he's got a child in there. Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> Okay, years. this is a two-minute deal. We're making it a ten-minute deal. That's Sit down. Uh, you, I just farted. It's been at least forty-eight, 48 seconds. Well, do it. <laughs> Does it? Is it bad? You're the first. Yeah, that's not too bad. <laughs> I can't, is it bad? I can't believe that I'm living with you and Brad. <laughs> <laughs> can we do a pew? Yeah, we can do a pew. <laughs> do you want to just do a new one? No. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well. Wants to start. Ladies and gentlemen, we are so thankful that you allowed us to do announcement videos this year. We know that we had a lot of fun and we hope that you all enjoyed them as well. This week, <laughs> what do we got, Ethan? On Wednesday, we have guys and gals group from 8 to 9, and then we have freshman groups from 9 to 10, and then we have hot dogs after that from 10 to 11. And then Thursday, Lance Williamson putting on a workshop, so that'll be pretty cool. What time is that at? 6.30 to 8 o'clock-ish. And then Friday night pancakes with the morning being coffee hour from 8 to 11 in the girls' house. Don't forget, Saturday, if you plan to dance the night away with some friends, uh, that's going to be starting at 8 o'clock. Ending at 11, approximately. That'll be a great time. Next Tuesday, there will not be TNW. No TNW finals week. One. But instead, what are we having, Ethan? Pizza! Oh! Pizza party starting at 6 o'clock, I believe, at the little boy's house. Pizza will be a great time. Yeah. Thank you guys again for allowing us to make these announcements videos. We hope that they've been informational and a little bit silly. You know, we didn't want to get too hectic. All right. Let's... On to some highlights and bloopers. Enjoy. <laughs> Ladies, you're here for, 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 for first. Mac and cheese, maybe, probably not, but we'll see. Back to you, Ethan. I need a wipe. Unreal. Bro, how are you so good at this? I don't understand. He loves guys. <laughs> 
more like a um, derives from the root word doa. <laughs> Saturday night. Do you love bananas? I love bananas. Oh, Christ be magnified. This a remix of a dictionary. We take over this game like it's Pictionary. Been told before that I'm a visionary. Mr. Worldwide, like a missionary. Why not W? Uh, cause it's French. Dogs on Wednesday He is the reason that my heart beats. You'll find other things are big dumb. How would you rate your ritz? Enough. Actually, we won't because it's spring break. <laughs> 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 some groups going on. Can you tell me about those? Eight to nine. Upper. Oh golly. What are they called? <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> and we said, what silly things are we going to do? We don't do silly things. <laughs> <laughs> we just here. Nope. <laughs> we just here. We just here. No job. Oh, the song is song. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> So we have to record that, and then you can just like put that over the sound. I'm tooting up a storm. I am so sorry. Oh, that's a <laughs> <our> video. <laughs> Three, two, one. Oh, hi. <laughs> Tell me one thing that Ben Sears does except raise. Oh, wow. I go to T&W. Hot take. Can I, can I have a T&W? And... <laughs> this is crazy. There's pressure on my thumb. Oh, nice. <laughs> they don't stay. Hey, just start it. Okay, we're good. We're good. Oh! That's not going to happen. Like oh. Well, we didn't know what to do in a perineum day. <laughs> this is good. Just, just had a stroke. <laughs> like, You're a woman. <laughs> Sorry. Can you do two things? The clown can you, on this girl. Looks like at the apex too. I yeah. Alright, what do we got? Uh, Alright, Yeah. Alright, ready? Uh, three. I thought her to be like somewhat. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, I. <laughs> Oh wow. <laughs> Dude, you like fucking with me. <laughs> I got the power! Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh man. Wait, what are we doing? <laughs> round and around and around and around we go. <laughs> Fun fact, this is a world record. We're filming on Thursday, and it's not due till Tuesday. Oh. Never been done before. Four, four. <laughs> and we're back. I just need to hear 
to say like a certain blah. 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 Can we end it with a blah. Fits right in with the bloopers. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and stand and worship on our last T&W.
Thank you, God, for loving us, for who we are. You are so good to each and every one of us. times that you stepped in when we messed up, the amount of times that you were the shoulder that we needed to cry on, you loved us, so much so that he died on a cross.
God's people said, Amen. Feel free to have a seat. What a joy it is to be in the room for the last Tuesday night worship of the year. Um, I am going to be talking a lot today about our upcoming summers. And uh, I hope and my prayer has been that you leave here um, encouraged and inspired. And um, I'm going to be talking a lot about what we as Christians can do in this new season of life that's coming up. And so I want to start off with a verse that I've really come to appreciate so much. Just one Bible verse. Ecclesiastes 3.11 says, He, being God, has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart, yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. He has set eternity in the human heart. What might that mean? Um, in the English language, we often refer to our heart as the place that holds all of our inner emotions and our affections and the motives for why we do anything. And uh, the Bible tells us that God knows your heart and he wants your heart. He wants your devotion and your affection, right? And uh, I was just talking with Lance just the other night um, about how until recently I had really overlooked um, the significance and the implications of Genesis, uh, first book of the Bible that really sets out who we are and why we're here. And um, Genesis tells us about a God who created. Now think about that. God is God. He is all. He is not lacking anything. He is whole and complete, and yet he chose to create. And so he created the universe. He created the earth and all things on the earth. And then he created these special things that aren't just quite like anything else. He created human beings, and he made them in his image, not just so that we might have dominion over all the things of the earth, but uh, that we might have relationship with God. God created us to know him personally. That's amazing. That's a crucial truth that needs to be a reality in our lives. And so God has set eternity in the human heart. Every human on earth is longing to know the, the eternal God of the universe. And so they're looking everywhere far and wide to find it, to find and fulfill that longing that God has set in our hearts. And uh, I think about some of the ways that people chase this fulfillment in all the wrong places. I think about on the mound over in Angola. There's a place, there's a shop that sells metaphysical rocks and spiritual incense and all these kinds of things. And uh, I hate to say it, but Lance and I do kind of make jokes about that. But in all seriousness, the people that really fall into that trap are people who have a longing to know eternal things, but they're finding it in all the wrong places. Um, all those other things that we might worship and think will fulfill that longing are just cheap imitations of the of the knowledge of the creator of the universe. And so this summer, as we go out from here, I want to draw our attention to big things, big ideas. And I, I fully believe that when you have the big things right in your life, the little things tend to be more clear and you tend to be able to figure those out a lot better. And that's why I want to encourage us tonight not just with helpful tips and tricks to read your Bible more this summer or um, what podcasts to listen to on your commute to work, but uh, tonight I really want to expand our vision for what God can do in you and through you in the next season of your life. And so if I stood up here and I said, guys, I want you to imagine what God might be able to do inside of you and how you, how you might change in this next season of your life. For many of us, we can't really imagine how we might change after a season of devoting ourselves to God. 
And we really might not even be able to imagine in what ways the Spirit is able to work in us when we walk with it. And so maybe, maybe some of us do have things in our life that we would like to change, and that's really good. But um, I suspect that um, many of us have been Christians for years, and sometimes um, we get pretty complacent with who we are. And frankly, we just don't have any big aspirations to change uh, anything big in our lives anytime soon. That was certainly true of me when I was in high school. And I liked who I was, and I didn't see a need to change, and I certainly didn't see how the Spirit could change me. Um, And I still remember realizing the moment that I realized that there really might be a lot more to this Christian faith than I had ever known before. Um, I didn't grow up listening to worship music, and so the first time I listened to worship music was when I was like 18 years old. And uh, yes, it was a Chris Tomlin album, for those of you who know me. Um, I love Chris Tomlin. And um, to tell a little bit more about my upbringing, uh, I grew up in the church, and I made it to every vacation Bible school because my mom helped run it. And I, so, so I knew all these Bible stories. What Bible stories do they, do they tell at vacation Bible school? Let me hear them. Noah in the ark, Jonah, Daniel, yeah, all these, man, I knew all these stories. Could I have told you what order they were in in the Bible? No, I probably couldn't have told you that. Let alone could I have told you the actual lessons that you were supposed to be learning about God and about man in those stories. And so at this point in my life, there was really no deep critical thinking going on about my faith. And, um, I knew that Jesus died for my sins, and uh, I really didn't have a relationship with him. It was all intellectual. Um, I I had no relationship in which I was thanking him and following his ways and learning more about who he was. And to be honest, I didn't even know what I was missing. And that's the sad part. And there was so much more for me to know. And when I say no... I don't just mean intellectual knowledge. I'm really talking about an experiential knowing. I I hadn't really experienced the Holy Spirit and what it could do when I submitted to the Spirit and actually sought to know and follow Christ. And so I came to college, I got plugged into CCH, and I saw on this secular campus Christians living out their Christian convictions out of the love of Christ in their hearts. And I saw in real life that there was so much more to this faith than I had ever known before. And there was so much more to know experientially. And I look back now, sitting here, at who I was in high school. And obviously, I give myself some grace. But I I do think, man, if only I had known then what I know now. If only I had sought out Christ in the way that I am now. If only I had submitted to the Spirit sooner in my life. And I say that, I by no means think that I have now made it to the pinnacle of Christianity. Um, And I hope that none of us ever feel that way. In fact, that's kind of what I want to talk about tonight. Uh, Because I'm a very different person than I was in high school, it's easy for me to fall into the trap of sometimes thinking that I'm good. I've made it, man, right? It's easy for me to forget that there's this need for continued sanctification. Sanctification is kind of this churchy word that just simply means the process of being made more holy, more into the actual image of Jesus Christ and to know him. And so, um, like I said, it's easy for me to forget that I'm not a finished work. I am being made new every day, right? The Bible tells us that. And there is more to grow and to learn. In fact, Paul wrote to the Philippian church, and he said this about himself. Now, mind you, this is Paul the Apostle who wrote most of the New Testament, and I'm talking about one of the greatest Christian men to have ever lived and walked the planet. It seems like to us, maybe he had life figured out. Maybe he knew enough, right? No, in in, in chapter 3, verses 10 through 14, he says, I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection And participate in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already arrived at my goal, 
but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself to have yet taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Paul was not complacent in the knowledge that he had of Christ. He wanted to know more. And once again, this was not just information. He didn't want to just know more about Jesus' favorite color or songs. This was not a, a mere exchange of information. Paul wanted to, um, he, he wants to know Christ experientially. He wants to participate in his sufferings. He wants to experience the power of Christ that was displayed in the resurrection. He wants to be further sanctified. And so the question that I ask you this evening, do you want to be further sanctified? Do you want to know Christ? How do we do that in the next season of life? For many of us, we are going to just have this summer away from school, and then we're going to come back to school, and we're going to come back to CCH, and all will be well. But for many of us, we're graduating, and we're moving on to not just a new season of life, but a new chapter, which is very exciting. And so because of that, I will I'll try to be inclusive to, to everybody, no matter what, your, what the next season of life holds for you. And so summer comes with changes in your schedule, your daily routine, your past times, your hobbies, all these things. It's a great time to start new habits and new hobbies. And so real quick, I want to just touch on how you spend your free time this summer and how you make decisions of what you might commit to. And so maybe you don't even have much free time this summer. I don't know what your summer looks like, um, but the predicament still stands no matter how little free time you might have that you're going to have a little bit and you're going to have a choice with how you use it. And so whether you have hours each night or you just have that 15 minute commute and the rest of your day is go, 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 nonetheless, you still have a choice to make regarding that time. And so as you choose what things you do in your free time, I want to equip you with that question. Is, the, is this activity that I'm choosing going to help me know Christ better? And with that question, I'm not trying to create this big brother that's looking over your shoulder, shaking his head, going, you better make the right decision. And that's not what I'm trying to create, but rather I'm, I'm trying to give you something to inspire you to know Christ better in this season of life and to take this time to, to look at how you can grow spiritually and what opportunities may lie in front of you to know Christ better. And so this summer, or sorry, the summer after my own sophomore year in college, I had an internship in which I drove an hour 15 one way to work each day, every day, five days a week. And... Um, that was a long time in the car each day, but I started out every drive um, with a morning prayer and listening to worship music before I ever listened to any other kind of music that I might want to listen to. And what happened sometimes was I thought maybe there was this other music that I wanted to listen to after I was done with, you know, my kind of devotional time. But sometimes, man, my worship was just so good that I didn't want to stop. And uh, I really see the fruits of how God won over my heart a little more and a little more and a little more that summer as time went on. And so for you guys, you don't have to fill up your time listening to music. You could listen to sermons from your favorite preacher. You could listen to that Christian podcast that you've been wanting to start. You can even listen, this is revolutionary, to the Bible um, I have found that to be a cheat code for knowing the Bible better, is listening to it when I'm in the shower, when I'm in the car. In fact, um, my Apple Music subscription ran out at the beginning of the year, and so you're going to think I'm crazy, but I have no music listening platform, and so for the last couple months, I have been taking time, I've spent hours in my car, silent. Right? Right? <laughs> That's revolutionary. But I've been more intentional about um, taking time to pray, taking time to yield and to, to slow down my life and my thoughts because I want to emphasize that there's a two-way relationship in your relationship with God. It goes both ways, talking and listening to God. And so I, talking to God in prayer is very important, but 
there's also a time that you should be listening to God and yielding to him in quiet moments. And so there's that. I give you that. Another way this summer that you can know Christ better, hold up the bookmark that you got when you walked in. This is our summer reading plan. Um, You see all those books on the back of the card. What's going to happen this summer is we, as a family, um, we want to um, kind of read through some of the Bible together and see how it speaks to us. And so um, each week, we are going to send out uh, for the, what we're reading are the minor prophets and some of the epistles in the New Testament. And so for each of the minor prophets, we will be sending out early on in the week a Bible project video um, that you can watch that really helps you know the context of what you're reading better. And then later that week, we will be sending out a video of uh, either a student or a staff member um, giving a devotion on what stuck out to them and what they learned about that passage, and so that we can all be kind of learning together alongside each other. So that's what's going to be going on this summer. Watch out for those videos, um, either through the app or on our YouTube page. And so that's another way that you can know Christ this summer. And so as I wrap up, you notice that I, I have kind of stayed on bigger concepts, and um, I, I, I've taken the effort to um, hammer home kind of... Um, knowing Christ, and that's what I want to hammer home. And like I said, I trust that if you have the big things right in your life, the little things will fall into place. So I haven't gone through the time to think about every single possible summer that each of you might have and then tell you what to do according to all your circumstances, because I trust that as you walk with the Spirit, He will guide you in all of those little things. And so I hope that going into this summer, um, that the longing that God has set in your heart may be fulfilled in knowing Christ better. And uh, you might have to get creative with what you do with your free time and how you seek out knowing Christ this summer. But nonetheless, it's the most important thing that you'll ever do. And so if we want to call ourselves Christians, we need to know Christ. And that starts in the next season of life. Would you guys pray with me? God, you have given us your son, and you have given us not just forgiveness of the guilt of our sins in your son, but you have given us power over sin in your son, Jesus, and we thank you for him. God, I know that you love each of us so much, and you created us to know you and to know Christ. Jesus said that whoever knows him knows the Father, and Lord, we We trust Jesus in his teachings, and we want to know his teachings, and we want to follow his ways. Would you, by your spirit, lead us in that in the next season of life, God? I pray that each of these students, as they go about their many different summers that they're going to have, that they would hold fast to you, that they would be seeking you this summer, God. I thank you so much for everything you have done in this school year, the many things we've learned from your word, from each other. And God, I also pray and thank you for the future that we're going to have. Lord, we love you so much. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
put my staff down. Welcome. May I have the scrolls, please? My lovely wife and assistant. Thank you. These are blank. <laughs> that won't do any good. You got any more? <laughs> Wonderful. All right. I hereby introduce the Lantern Club, which serves as a Christian Campus House's alumni association. The Lantern Club, despite this outrageous and elaborate ceremony, is not a cult <laughs> and has no fees. As a lantern is a portable protective case for a light with transparent openings in which purposes to irradiate darkness by emitting electromagnetic wavelengths between 400 and 700 nanometers. <laughs> Only some of you know what those are. <laughs> Likewise, the inductees of the Lantern Club have determined or demonstrated the principles of spiritual illumination surrounding Jesus' words in Matthew 5, in which he said, You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. Tonight's inductees of the Lantern Club have associated themselves with and have been involved with the Christian Campus House. So will the inductees please step forward as your name is called and come to my left. Adam Anderson, <laughs> Noah Bullard, McKenna Carpenter, Ismar Chu, you never go, Blaine Byam, Matthew Decker, David Dennison. Adam Dumas, Joey Emmenhauser, Afalabi, I, I almost thought about saying your last name, but I get it wrong, Amira Faulkner, Hallie Fenimer, Andrew Fisher, Parker Gillespie, Wiseman Jordan Clark, Caleb Cruz, Connor Culp, Aiden Lapp, Annie Lehman, Mackenzie Nicolin, Anna Parker, Riley Ramsey, Justin Rohde, Jacob Rader, Ingrid Rosal, Ben Sears, Paso, Pasa Shirtha, Emily Stetka, Kimberly Stuckey, Carmen Swigard, Taylor Swimeller, Zach Thomas, Bethany Ulring, Cameron Vandermolen, Aaron Whetstone, Isaac Wilhelm, Andrea Wright. What a line of people. Yeah, let's give it up for this class. All right, the duties of this membership class of the Lantern Club are to be a lantern as a lantern shines in all directions, north, south, east, and west, so as the Lantern Club members continue to shine your light into the past, present, and future. Shining your light towards the future. God holds many wonderful times ahead, filled with joy and happiness, along with some trials and difficulties. As a lantern, you are asked to let your light shine through your commitment to Christ, at just as much as you have while you've shown it trying, impacting the lives of those you have not yet met through a genuine love for them and their needs, being a light to the future, being a light in the present 
as Christians and graduates, you will transition into the workforce, become self-sufficient, move from home, make new friends. Let your light shine through the principles of God's Word into those new arenas, joining with a church in your new community to bring about the Great Commission to be a light to the present, being a light towards the past. As life brings new adventures, jobs, romance, marriage, then family, let your light shine by remembering the Christian Campus House, the great times, the memories, the friends. For some of you, CCH was where you first where your I'm sorry, where your light was shine was your lit first. Sorry, <laughs> while their lantern or others were lantern was fueled or rekindled, being a lantern of the Christian Campus House by partnering in prayer with the ministry by being a resource of ideas and support, and by encouragement through your success in God's kingdom, being a light to the past. As a lantern shines in all directions, so let your light shine into the past, present, and future. Though there are no fees by joining the Lantern Club, and it won't carry much weight on your resume, it is the highest honor awarded at the Christian Campus House. Let's welcome this fine group here. We can shift it. We would like to present each one of you with an award and a gift. And I will mention that each of the staff would love to greet you with a handshake or a hug of your choice. <laughs> you get all the staff. So you choose the hug, or you just get the hug. Adam Anderson, this Lantern Club Award of Light is given to you for exemplifying the character quality of boldness. It says, for benefiting the kingdom of God during your years at Trine University by having the confidence that what you, are having, or that what you say and do are true, right, and just. And I think I appreciate your confidence. You know right, you know wrong, and you stand for that, and you're not afraid to take a stand. I appreciate your boldness. Yeah, I'll give you a hug. Ismar, this Lantern Club Award of Light is given to you for exemplifying the character quality of authenticity. For benefiting the kingdom of God during your years at Trine University by being true and unashamed of exactly who God created you to be. And you are, yes. <laughs> And, and I think we all just appreciate who you are and that you have remained constant, consistent in who you are. Thank you, Ismar. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Matthew, this Lantern Club Award of Light is given to you for exemplifying the character quality of discernment, for benefiting the kingdom of God during your years at Trine University, by being able to understand the deeper reasons why things happen. And I think we appreciate your discernment and just discerning God's calling into ministry, God changing your direction from what you sought out to do when you came here and uh, where God's leading you now. Thank you, Matthew. Yeah. yeah. David. This Lantern Club Award of Light is given to you for exemplifying the character quality of servanthood. It says, for benefiting the kingdom of God during your time at Trine University by faithfully giving your best to serve others. I mean, I think uh, we have all witnessed just uh, your servanthood, whether it's in the back um, or anything we needed or anybody needs something, they're going to call on you and you're going to step up and uh, you're going to help them out and appreciate your servanthood. See you. Thank you, David. Adam, this Lantern Club Award of Light is given to you for exemplifying the character quality of reverence, for benefiting the kingdom of God during your years at Trine University by honoring those in position of leadership because of the godly authority they've represented. And I think we as a staff have seen that you have just shown a lot of respect and reverence, you understand that there are people in your life that have made a difference and an impact in your life, and you've been grateful for that. Thank you, Adam. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. 
Joey, this Lantern Club Award of Light is given to you for exemplifying the character quality of maturity. For benefiting the ministry at CCH during your time at Trine University through your unwavering commitment to the Lord's work. I think uh, you have just shown a lot of maturity um, or old man qualities. Um, <laughs> of being, being strong, being constant, being present, being there, whether it's with hot dogs and, or working and getting everything done. Uh, appreciate the qualities that you've shown. Thank you, Joey. Amos, this uh, Lantern Club Award of Light is given to you for exemplifying the character quality of determination, for benefiting the kingdom of God during your years at Trine University by purposing to accomplish right goals at the right time, regardless of the opposition. And as we have reminisced together about your freshman year and you coming in ready to just, you had high goals and you pressed on and you persevered through, you've been determined uh, to work hard at school and football and faith and everything in between. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, Amira. Hi. <laughs> this Lantern Club Award of Light is given to you for exemplifying the character quality of availability for benefiting the CCH ministry during your years at Trine University by making your own schedule and priorities secondary to those you are serving. And I think you have just, you've just scheduled your life to be available for other people. Uh, you have sat in places. You have made yourself available at the girl's house. People want to stop by and talk. You're ready to do that at any time. And uh, available for ministry, available to love on people. Thank you, Amira. Hallie, this Lantern Club Award of Light is given to you for exemplifying the character quality of loyalty, for benefiting the CCH ministry during your time at Trine University by demonstrating your commitment to God and to those whom he has called you to serve. Hallie, I think that uh, your loyalty has been shown just to your love for people and your commitment uh, to be a friend, to be there for other people. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you. Drew, this Lantern Club Award of Light is given to you for exemplifying the character quality of confidence, for benefiting the kingdom of God during your years at Trine University by structuring your life around what is eternal and cannot be destroyed or taken away. And I think we saw your confidence last year as God called you into ministry for the summer and uh, you set aside engineering work to go do something radically different. Um, and you did it with confidence because you knew what God is calling you to do. Thank you, Drew. <laughs> Parker, this Lantern Club Award of Light is given to you for exemplifying the character quality of joyfulness, for benefiting the kingdom of God during your years at Trine University by demonstrating the enthusiasm of your spirit when the, your soul is in fellowship with the Lord. I think everybody who knows you knows that, uh, man, you're excitable. You get other people excited. And there's a joy that's just constant. Uh, it doesn't just come and go. It's always on, you know, and appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. You're up. It's real. Yeah, Wiseman, this... Lantern Club Award of Light is given to you for exemplifying the character quality of decisiveness, for benefiting the kingdom of God during your years at Trine University by recognizing key factors and finalizing difficult decisions. We feel that you, ha you know right and you know wrong, and regardless, it's black and it's white, and you're going to stand for what's right. You're going to stand for the truth. That's decisiveness. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate you. Caleb, this Lantern Club Award of Light is given to you for exemplifying the character quality of zeal, 
for benefiting the kingdom of God during your years at Trine University by showing enthusiasm and dedication to seeing God's plan succeed. Uh, you have been focused on furthering God's kingdom here, and you have done whatever it takes to do that. Uh, you've said yes to any opportunity because you wanted to see God's plan succeed on this campus. Thank you for serving him. Mm -hmm. Aiden, my friend, this Lantern Club Award of Light is given to you for exemplifying the character quality of eagerness, for benefiting the, the ministry of CCH by desiring to serve the Lord no matter what the cost. And I think from, from day one when you said yes to Jesus, uh, you have been all in 100%. And no matter what the cost, you want to serve Him, you want to love Him, you want to bless other people, you want to minister to other people. You're willing to put away, put aside your personal agenda to serve the Lord. Uh, thank you. Yeah, brother. <laughs> Mackenzie, this Lantern Club Award of Light is given to you for exemplifying the character quality of flexibility, for benefiting the kingdom of God during your years at Trine University by not becoming attached to ideas or plans which could be changed by God or others. Isn't that appropriate? Yes, yes it is. Your plans have had to change, and, uh, and you have been flexible. And I, I sense that you're a person that likes to have a plan, and so flexibility is something that we've witnessed in you. Thank you. Yeah. Riley, this Lantern Club Award of Light is given to you for exemplifying the character quality of creativity, for benefiting the kingdom of God during your years at Trine University by approaching needs, tasks, and ideas from a new perspective. And uh, you are a creative person, whether it's painting our sidewalk, uh, whether it's building a Duplo tower in my living room last night. <laughs> Um, but that's more than that. It's uh, creativity and how you see the world, how you approach situations and problems. I appreciate that, Riley. <laughs> Justin, this Lantern Club Award of Light is given to you for exemplifying the character quality of enthusiasm. Yeah. Yeah. For benefiting the kingdom of God during your years at Trine University by expressing joy in each task and giving it your best effort, right? Enthusiasm, right? Like, welcome! Can't do it as well as you can. But more than just Friday night, it's every time somebody encounters you, you come with enthusiasm. I appreciate your passion. Yes. I miss you, brother. Jacob, this Lantern Club Award of Light is given to you for exemplifying the character quality of wisdom, for benefiting the CCH ministry during your time at Trine University by seeing and responding to life situations from God's frame of reference. I think you have grown in wisdom in your time here, coming to the Lord and now going into ministry, but also you have really served as a, a, a person people seek out for wisdom and for guidance and counsel. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate you. Ingrid, this Lantern Club Award of Light is given to you for exemplifying the character quality of gentleness, for benefiting the kingdom of God during your time at Trine University by showing personal care and concern and meeting the needs of others. I think you love people and you care for other people. I think of uh, um, the fundraiser that you did for your people back home, and you cared for them, and uh, we, we helped out with that, but that was your personal heart and care for other people. Thank you, Ingrid. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Benjamin. <laughs> this, this Lantern Club Award of Light is given to you for exemplifying the character quality of generosity. 
for benefiting the CCH ministry by realizing that all that you have belongs to God and by using it for His purposes. And I think generous in multiple ways with your time, with your resources. I think particularly in just investing in people and taking them out uh, to eat, to hang out for scoops, ice cream, and appreciate, oh, scoops, sorry, social. <laughs> yes, how dare I make that mistake? Um, but your generosity, really, in many ways. So thanks, Ben. Thanks, Ben. Yeah. Appreciate you. Kim, this Lantern Club Award of Light is given to you for exemplifying the character quality of hospitality, for benefiting the kingdom of God during your years at Trine University by cheerfully sharing food, shelter, and spiritual refreshment with those whom God has brought into your life. Kim, I think hospitality describes you wonderfully. You're always baking something, making something to share it with other people. Thank you for your love and care. Mm -hmm. Carmen, this Lantern Club Award of Light is given to you for exemplifying the character quality of dependability. For benefiting the CCH ministry during your years at Trine University, by fulfilling what you consented to do even when it meant unexpected sacrifices. I think in all of your roles in ministry all throughout campus, not just here, people can rely on you. And uh, when you say you're going to do something, you're going to do it and you're going to get it done. Thank you, Carmen. Yes. Taylor, this Lantern Club Award of Light is given to you for exemplifying the character quality of attentiveness, for benefiting the kingdom of God during your years at Trine University by showing the worth of individuals by cons constantly giving them your undivided attention. I think, Taylor, that when you are engaged with somebody, when you're talking with somebody, you are 100% present and fully attentive to them, their needs, what they're saying. And appreciate that. Uh, that's wonderful in ministry and for his kingdom. Yes. Thanks, buddy. Zach, this Lantern Club Award of Light is given to you for exemplifying the character quality of virtue, for benefiting the CCH ministry during your time at Trine University through your moral excellence and purity of spirit that radiates from your life as you obey God's word. And I think that wonderfully describes you as a person. You're a person of character, morals, purity, upstanding. You hold the bar high for your life and for those around you. Thank you. Yes. Cameron, this Lantern Club Award of Light is given you for exemplifying the character quality of imagination. What's that? For benefiting the kingdom of God during your years at Trine University by approaching needs, tasks, and ideas from new perspectives. Um, yes, your buddy Jordan thought this would be perfect. You're pointing at him, weren't you? Um, he, uh, a ca camera, I want you to know, like, he was a part of a meeting to figure out things with T&W, and he had ideas like mismatched shoes, and, and uh, yeah. And, and other just super creative, like, way out there ideas. You won't get it, we won't get in all of them. But I think also, I think as I see this word and, and know you, the word vision, big ideas, looking forward, really describes you as you and I work together in Freshman Guys Group, um, that you uh, had a vision and you brought new ideas, and, uh, but they were always kingdom-focused. Thank you, Cameron. Aaron, this Lantern Club Award of Light is given you for exemplifying the character quality of courageous, for benefiting the kingdom of God by being heroic in your obedience to God. And I really appreciate you. Uh, you are bold. You are strong. You know the truth. You're willing to stand up against and for all the right things. I appreciate your courage. You're courageous. Thank you, Aaron. Appreciate you. Thank you. 
Isaac. Hi, got a partner with you. Yes, this Lantern Club Award of Light is given to you for exemplifying the character quality of devotion. For benefiting the CCH ministry during your time at Trine University by demonstrating your commitment to God and to those whom he's called you to serve. I think your devotion to this ministry, despite going to another university, but still has always been here. They don't know how many conversations we've had where you've wanted to know how things are going here and how your heart has been here, how you've invested in people here, how you've been a part of the community here, how you've been devoted to our Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. Thank you for your devotion here and to Him. Mm -hmm. Thank you, buddy. I love you. All right. Andre, last one. Thank you for be sticking with us. Uh, the Lan this Lantern Club Award of Light is given you for exemplifying the character quality of compassion, for benefiting the kingdom of God during your time at Trine University by showing personal care and concern and meeting the needs of others. I think that describes you wonderfully. You're compassionate, you're loving, you care for people, and that's been shown in your four years here. Thank you. Well, let's give one more round of applause for this senior class. I, I will say to the, the class here, uh, that the, and for all of you, I mean, this is a wonderful class, and you have grown as a class. Uh, you have grown, obviously, in your faith, in your relationship with the Lord. Uh, you have been an asset to this ministry, um, and I really commend you too for sticking it out and uh, and and gotten it out. Uh, you were the class that, as freshmen, didn't get to finish your freshman year here at Trine. Uh, but when you came back in the fall, it wasn't the same. Uh, but you stayed committed. Stay committed here to this family and this body, uh, to each other, uh, because you needed that. And uh, that's commendable. And uh, we want to pray for you as we send you out from here. And I'm going to ask this guy, Jordan, uh, to pray for you. And the rest of us, where you're at, let's just stretch our hands out towards our brothers and sisters, our friends forever, the class of 2023. Let's pray together. Father, we are so grateful for this group of seniors. We are so thankful that you have blessed this university, this ministry, this family with the opportunity to know them, to love them. We thank you for all the ways that they have invested in your kingdom here the ways they've invested in one another, the ways they've invested in us. God, thank you for them. Thank you for all that you've done through them. Thank you for all that you've done in their lives. God, we look forward to the story that you're going to continue to write as they move on from here, as they step into the next thing, the new adventures that you have for them. God, as I said earlier, th this is... This is the end of a chapter, but it's also the start of a new one and a continuing story that you are writing in their lives, and we are so excited for where that will take them. And so, God, we pray that you would surround them with people that will love them and encourage them in their walk, that will help them to continue to grow from this moment forward. And God, use them to make a huge impact for your kingdom wherever they go. Empower them with boldness to impact the world for Jesus. We thank you so much for them. And pray over them with a blessing as they move forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, senior class, uh, we want to get a picture of you when we're done here. We have uh, another song the worship team is going to lead us in. Um, but we, if you could come back up when we're done here, that would be awesome. You guys can return to your seat here for our last song.
Thanks. Thank you. We got one more song. So let's sing it out.
such a great night. For all the seniors on their last BMW, God, I just thank you for all the years that you've uh, been with us. And let CCH work through us and with us. seniors that I, I know and have felt the impact um, of you working through that wonderful organization. And God, I ask that as we all leave here, that we would keep this last song in mind, God, that as we go different ways and we do different things, God, you're constantly working. You're constantly moving. And no matter where we go, God, we can cause change. We can bring the light of the world to the doorsteps of our neighbors. For all these things, Jesus. Just a few closing announcements. Um, so I am doing a workshop this Thursday, um, basically been like a two and a half year journey um, on just learning, studying about the Bible. Um, so I think uh, the information given there, I think you guys will want to know, um, it'll just help you gain a better understanding of uh, things if you want to learn more about the Bible. So uh, you should come to that, 6.30, uh, upper room, girls' house, Thursday. Um, also, last week I mentioned about uh, Turkey, um, going to Turkey, um, the country, in 2024, summer of 2024. So if you guys are interested in that, there's a sign-up sheet in the back. Um, also, there will be a pizza party this Tuesday in replacement of T&W at 6 to 7 in the guy's house. Um, so free pizza, you'll want to come to that. Um, seniors. Uh, as we mentioned, you'll want to stay for a picture after this, um, and there will also be snacks in the back, and a few more closing announcements. Go ahead and have a seat. Uh, first, Jessica, could you come help me? <laughs> Yo, uh, this Friday at 530, I'm just going to have like a bonfire night, volleyball, spike ball, basketball, everything, anything. Any of you guys are invited. I put a message in Spontaneous at my address and stuff. But if you don't have Spontaneous, you can come talk to me afterwards and get my info. But yeah, everybody here is welcome. It'll be a fun time. Everybody. <laughs> Ministry cards are in the back there. If you haven't told us what you're interested in being a part of and serving, do that on your way out as well. Um, also, I think there's a nomination for the uh, spring formal. But we had a senior come in later, uh, Bethany. You want to come on up here? 
Yes. Want to recognize you. You don't get the whole ceremony. We could do it all over again for you. I'd be willing to do it, though, if you want. Okay, the robe and everything. But I did want to give you your uh, certificate here. And this is from the staff. Uh, your Lantern Club Award of Light was given to you for exemplifying the care to quality of contentment. Uh, for benefiting the kingdom of God during your years at Trine University by realizing that God has provided everything you need for your present happiness. And I think uh, just contentment, um, I'm thinking about uh, on the court with uh, volleyball, you just knew your role and you, you were content with that, you know, and just content with wherever God takes you and changing your plans and providing for you as well. But appreciate your contentment in life. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Give it up for Bethany. All right. I think that wraps us all up. Like I said, there's snacks in the back. Seniors, come on up here. We'll get a picture up here in front.